has everything. Bumping in, banging. <laughs> Big boy. Big boy. All righty, man. Now, I've been waiting on this day right here. Mm -hmm. We got Travis Barker up in here, Ooh. man. Travis, first off, welcome back, brother. Thank you. Um, now we got to put another slash when we say Travis Barker. You know what I'm saying? We can't just say yeah. Travis Barker, producer mm -hmm. slash yeah, drummer slash uh, sushi chef slash <laughs> <laughs> now author. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Author by the name. Man, how crazy is that now, bro? That now that, that now you are you're an author. Yeah, man, it's uh it's it's crazy. It was a, a an interesting procedure, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get through this book. It was uh I learned a lot, a, a lot in general about writing a book and a lot about myself. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. did you feel like when you go to tell your story, when you when you're starting to do your story, do you feel like you start to peel like layers off, and then there's some things that you just did. You have a hard time remembering some stuff, and then it started to come back. I mean, just this morning I remembered something yeah. that I didn't put wow. in the book. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, you the more you talk about a certain time period, the more come that comes back to you, and uh, and especially when I'd reach out to people where I had friends. You know, a lot of friends contributed to this book too that I grew up with. So they would say something, and then I'd be like, "Oh man, I, I do remember that." Or, mm. or, or maybe sometimes, "Damn, I, I did, too many drugs, and I don't remember that." Right, but, right. But like, that's, did that happen? But that's amazing yeah. that that happened. Yeah, like so. There, there's a little bit of both. Were you hesitant at first, Travis, to write a book? Yes. Why? Um, cause I didn't want to. I mean, I wasn't gonna put no nothing fake out. Right. You know, like I, um, I wanted it to be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. You know, as honest as I could without legally getting in trouble. Yeah, or, and getting somebody else in yeah, trouble. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and at the end of the day, I, I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to like badmouth nobody. Right, did right, you, right. Did you have to ask for anyone's permission to share a certain story, like one of your friends? Oh yeah, I mean anything that because your legal have to go through it as well. Yeah, even like if a friend shared something, it was like, you know, legal came back and was like, "Yo, we I don't know if we could talk about that." And I was like, "Well, you have him on record. You have him mm -hmm. on tape saying the story." Yeah. And they're like, no, nah, we still need him to write off on it. So, yeah. Like, I think there's Damn. a part where, like, Ice-T was explaining to me how to build a bomb. No. And how to, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Ice-T. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow up someone's spot if oh, they mess with no. you. And um, and I was oh. talking about being on Warp Tour and, and Ice having these conversations with me. And they're like, well, we actually need Ice-T to call and, and tell us or or we need some written confirmation. Right. So I said, Ice, man, can you, can you. Can you call her? And he was like, Whatever. man, I'm not calling <laughs> No, he did it. He did. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> he like, she was man. like, oh, my gosh, that's the best phone call. Or I don't know if he called her email. She's like, that's the best email I've ever I've ever gotten in my life. Like mm -hmm. Ice-T confirming, you know, he was schooling you on how to blow someone, you know, someone. <laughs> wow. Just in case you ever need yeah, it. Yeah, just in case. Just yeah, in case. He just... did that on that whole tour on Warped Tour. He'd be like, man, anybody messes with me, I'm going to blow that, you know. Whatever I can't say it, but uh, but it was classic, man. But yeah, just for example, stuff like that, you know. Like hey, man, and, and Ice, I heard he working on a book called "How to Blow Up Your Neighbor's House If Need Be." <laughs> oh, look at that! Look at that! Working, working title right now. Best believe be that, awesome. man. Now the how, the book is called "Living Large, Cheating Death, and Drums, Drums, Drums." Yep. And and Travis, you always strike us or strike me as being, you know, like you one of the realest cats in the so called business. And you're you're extremely private. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Aside from everybody now socially trying to get in everybody's business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you don't run out and try to find the TMZs of the world or, you know what I'm saying, have your publicist calling because you're about to go do something and you need to somebody to take pictures. So when I heard that you were doing the book, for one, I knew you had a story to tell. And not just the story of the accident, but just like, you know, like the situation, you know, growing up moms, pops, like there, there's a lot of people that could identify with a Travis Barker story. And when I went to go write my book, it was like I felt like I was having all these one-on-ones with people, but I knew I couldn't talk yeah. to everyone. So when it hit me up to write a book, at first I was like, man, I'm not, I'm not writing a book, for, probably for some of the same reasons. Either we didn't think we had a book in us, do, do people really, really want to hear our story? And then it's sometimes you just don't want to tell it. Yeah, You know, but when you start getting into conversations with others, you say, you know what, well, if I could put a book out and talk to the masses, then then I'll actually do the book. And no one could tell your story better, Travis, than you. Yeah. You know? 
I mean, I had all those three hangups too. I mean, what makes you sit around and go like, yeah, my life's dope enough to, for it to be a book right. or, or, or man, I want to share all like the, the guts, like the real everything, you know, like that people don't know. But then I think when you get, you know, for me, it was like Gavin Edwards, the guy I wrote the book with, mm -hmm. he had been to Iraq with me, like with Blink and he had done like several like Rolling Stone pieces with me. So the comfort level was kind of scary, right. you know? Um, but, you know, we ended up, you know, I, I kind of, when we started, I didn't really have any reservations or restrictions. I didn't, like, really box myself in what i talk about, what I wouldn't talk about. But those comfort levels keep getting more and more, you know, comfortable. Yeah, and, man. and I ended up, you know, there'd be times where I'm, you know, we're laughing and cracking up. And this guy has the best laugh. So I would almost, I'd almost wait for it. You know, he sounded like a hyena. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he start laughing. And then, uh, and then there'd be times where I'd be bawling my eyes out. And I couldn't even talk for five to ten minutes yeah you know, i just had to walk out the room you like, know and just i can't talk right now you know it was times when my writer she would just shut me down you know what i'm saying because yeah. i would physically yeah. be exhausted or if i go into something about like my mom's or something like that like yeah i couldn't recover and she was just like okay well we got it for today you know what i'm saying and that, yeah. that's when you have somebody good with you mm -hmm. that know how to bring your story out and tell your story just like how you're telling it Travis, where where does the the book begin? Is there a certain is is it from I was born such and such, or do you just pick up at a certain point? You know, we did start like that when we were actually going through the procedure of writing the book, mm -hmm. just starting off with my childhood. But uh, they took like actually uh, a page from the beginning of my plane crash, yeah. and that's what the, the book opens up with. So it kind of like that's like captures you. It's kind of like when you like. You watch a movie and and they open with the illest scene and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh! And then it just and then the the movie starts and you just you know, um, so yeah, it's it starts like that. Do do you feel like when would you have written a book if you didn't have the plane crash? I don't know. It's hard to say if a lot of things would happen if it right. wasn't for the plane crash. You how, know what I mean? How different. Was your life before the plane crash and then after the plane crash? Um, I think, I mean, a re a really different, to be honest. I was, um, I mean, before the plane crash, I was, I mean, I was already a good father. I, I already mm -hmm. had kids, and they were already beginning to slow me down, and I already had, like, the beginning of, of what was signs and, like, uh, things in my life, like my children, that were, like, kind of, like, you know, like, calling out to me to like mm -hmm. slow down and not be such an idiot um but i mean i went from you know taking drugs like abusing drugs you know beyond recreationally um to being in a burn center for like four months mm -hmm. and um and you know having to have like morphine and 27 surgeries within those four months to like going out and never taking like a painkiller again mm -hmm. or like any drugs again you know, when I was, like, sent home with Oxycontin because I was going to be in so much pain. And I was like, I'm, you know, you go from recreationally being, like, pretty much a dumpster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you just, you don't even realize it. You're just going through your day. I was, you know, I guess, like, typical, like, rock star BS. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and, and for me, it was, like, medicating myself to fly because I hated flying. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, that was a big thing. So you always, Travis, had a problem with flying? Yeah, I always needed to medicate to get on the plane, and then I needed to medicate to stay on the plane, and then I needed to medicate to stay in whatever country I was on tour once I got there mm -hmm. and be away from my children. So oh, wow. those were, like, three things that always kind of, like, you know, were, were, was hitting me, you know, the hardest. So I went from being like that to, you know, once you're in a hospital and you have to have morphine right. and you're on a the clicker, pushing a button, yeah. And you're, like, you're controlled by all these drugs that are masking, like, you know, if it's not pain, it's like emotionally, it's whatever, you know, like, I mean, I was in the hospital. I didn't even realize my friends had passed away. Yeah. I didn't even realize like the condition I was in. I was so, I mean, I had some good drugs in the hospital. Right. You know, for when real. did, when did, when did you find out that, that like your friends didn't make it? Like Che, Chris, like, do they, do they wait? You know, I, I had an, I, it's weird. You know, when I was in Georgia, I kept going like, you know, everyone would be like, yo, Adam's right next door to you. And, um, what I, you know, some, someone said something funny. And I was like, well, how's Chris and Che doing? You know? And I didn't really, like, no one would answer me. And I was so masked with drugs. Right. 
Like I didn't really get it. It wasn't mm. it wasn't till I was like four months later when I was off all the drugs. Like I was on some like I don't know what drugs they had me on, man. Like it wasn't until I got home back to LA and Calabasas that I was like I realized everything that had happened. And I think it was because I got out of the hospital and they were like, you know, there's certain drugs that you're on that you should probably take for the rest of your life. Right. Because you might be like, you know, you, you you know, you live through something traumatic. So, you know, my doctor was like, don't be so hard on yourself. Take them. You know, you'll need them. And I didn't. So I think I had to deal with a whole bunch of, you know, pain and emotion all at once, mm. you know, because I didn't want to be on anything, you know. I went from, like I said, abusing to, like, not wanting anything in my system. Hey, know? Trav, when, do you know how when certain things happen, that would have been like, as far as like, you know, staying on prescription or staying on whatever they, that that could have been the excuse. You know what I'm saying? Not the excuse, yeah. but the reason. Like, and people would have, like, people would have understood, mm -hmm. yeah. like, what what you were going through. Like, how, how did you manage to say, you know what, I'm not going to do that? Because really, man, just the slope of what, how traumatic that was, the average person I feel it couldn't, you know, unless you're there, you know, I've never been through anything as such, but it feels like the average person would just kind of, kind of give up. What kept you from just giving up? Was it your kids? Was it family? <clears throat> I mean, it was like, it was definitely, I mean, my kids were the number one support system. Obviously I had great friends like, you know, uh, Skinhead Rob and, mm -hmm. and uh, Armin and Cheese, everyone around me, the game, you know, he would come to the hospital and visit me. Um, I had a great support system, but, now, it wasn't until, you know, I had got home and I was like maybe like a week or two on like these, you know, not pain medication, but other medications. And I saw Rob and Rob, you know, I don't think he uh, he knew I heard him, but he was like telling somebody, he's like, oh, Travis is is way different. Yeah. You know, and I heard him say that. And then like, you know, my uncle who had been in town was like the same thing. Like, you notice Travis is really slow, like yeah. he's really like. He, you think he's gonna be okay? Like, hey, Trav, when you came to my house, yeah, my wife and I, when we were just in the kitchen and you were just talking, like, and that was, you know, you had just got home as well. We said the same thing. Yeah. Like I was like, man, he's and you know, and then you know, just a lot of prayer for you to come around. But I was like, man, it, it, and of course, it's still a healing process. But at that at that moment, Trav, I was like, man, like. He, he has a lot to, to bear. He has a lot to deal with, man. Yeah. And I knew it, you know, like it was hearing people say that. And I was like, damn, you know, like it's undeniable. I've heard like two, two of the closest people to me say it. So after that, it was like, I just started flushing them down the toilet. Mm. I just refused. And I, and I kind of figured it was like the medicine I was on, you know? Right. And then, yeah, man, just. Were you, you having nightmares, Trav? Oh man, I didn't sleep for weeks. Yeah. I didn't sleep for weeks. I actually, the only thing I got addicted to when I got out the hospital was was promethazine, like lean, mm. which I had around the house from you know before from the lean and, uh, days. Yeah, and uh, and I would literally swig it till I'd fall asleep. I'd get wow. an hour or two sleep, and then I'd wake up. And I was lucky if I got that, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, man, I just had, you know, crazy flashbacks just. I mean, after something like that happens to you, you gotta like, you gotta accept it. You mm -hmm. can't be in denial. So like, you know, um, you know, after months, I, my sleep schedule got a little bit better. Um, I had like a post traumatic doctor that I talked to, the same yeah. one that was in the, the hospital with me. You know, he would, uh, you know, he was the one who yanked my phone out of my room because I used to be in there calling. I'd, I'd actually call Rob and a couple of my other homies and be like, yo, like I'll. I'll do whatever, man. Like find someone that'll come here, take me out, and I'll I'll deposit money in their bank account. <laughs> you talking about like as far yeah, as like ending yeah. your life kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, I was. That was I was going to ask you. Did you contemplate like any suicide or anything crazy? Uh, you know, as oh such? yeah, in the hospital because I, you know, you got to remember like another thing that comes with you know drug abuse was once I was in the hospital, like eleven out of my twenty seven surgeries I woke up during. So I'd just oh, wake up. Yeah, I wouldn't even God. realize I was in wow. surgery, and I would swing on doctors. You know, mm -hmm. it was like, it was crazy. They I, Meds wouldn't work, you know? So it was like, it was nuts, man. I was definitely, uh, it was a, a roller coaster when I first got in there. 
you know, it wasn't towards the end until they kind of got, like, you know, figured out, like, yo, this guy was quite the doctor himself before he got right. in the hospital. You know, we really need to uh, pay attention to his medicine. Right, right, right. You know? And I remember you you were saying that you had missed your kids so much that you would just, in, in, in the hospital, you would just tell them to bring you kids. Yeah. Yeah, I would visit with other kids in the burn center. You know, anything just to kind of like, you know, that was towards the end when I was getting more like, you know, PMA was setting in, mm -hmm. you know, trying to, you know, positive mental attitude had to kick in at some point, you know. And, Do you go uh, to counseling now, Trav? Nah, I mean, I'm, I've been good now. It was like, it was literally the first year. Right. The first year was just hell. You know, and then I was good. I was good towards the end of that year. And then when AM passed, oh God. then it was like, you know, and, you know, AM was a, you know, besides my children, Adam was a huge support system. Because mm -hmm. that was, you know, there wasn't, I always tell people there wasn't like I could go chop it up with this therapist or this doctor because they haven't been in a plane. Crash. Right. They're going to do their best to, to sit there and hear me out and, you know, give me the best advice they can. But the truth is they didn't. They didn't survive a plane crash or lose nobody, mm -hmm. you know. So, for us, we were we were one another support system, and uh, there was this website called Access Help that Am and I were like obsessive about. Like we were on it all the time. But and what it was, was that? It was basically a, a a a website that you'd go for like, you know, people who had lost loved ones in plane crashes. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing there for us. Right. It so wasn't like all, survivors. Yeah. All we had was each other. But in the same sense, we were. We were dealing with losing someone as well with Chris and Che. Right. So, um, you know, it covered it covered a, a piece of it, but you know, he was the support system. We would just sit and chop it up for hours. You could know? you see Adam AM, could you see him where where you started to get concerned as far as like his lifestyle or was there anything going on that, that you saw that you were like trying to pull him back from or did you see a slope? <clears throat> I mean, I wasn't too proud to to notice right from the get go after it happened that we were both different. Mm -hmm. you, like, I couldn't put my my finger on it, even if it was like not even like not in a picture like burn like you know any of my physical scars or burns or whatever because they're not really that visible. But but more just our um like you could see by the expression on our face, you know, like something. I don't, I don't know if you took us both before, like a before and after. You something know, like changed. those two dudes have been through something. You know, just something changed. Um, but no, I mean, I would honestly, I would, we'd have lunch and he would ask um, for me to bring my kids because mm. he enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, I mean, you know how kids, you know, kids will bring out yeah. the best in you yeah. and it's just good energy. Um, but, you know, he'd say, like, man, I don't, you know, all I have is my cat, you know, and, uh, I just, he, he was always tripping. He was always saying, I want to go get my, you know, there was this doctor who would, like, retrain your brain. So he was very, very, like, you know, motivated to go do that. And I said, yeah, I'll do it with you anytime." But I said, man, it's, nothing's going to happen. Like, this this dude's not going to retrain my brain for me to look down and, you know, look at, you know, 60% of my body that's been burnt and go, like, hey, this didn't happen from a plane crash. Right, right, <laughs> You know, right. it's different. Yeah. It's, it's just different for me where he, I think, like, I think like seven percent of his body was burnt, so it was like it was a little bit different. We both mentally, we were both in it together, mm -hmm. you know. But so, physically, Trav, you were you're sixty percent, sixty five percent, yeah. So that's pretty much from the waist down. Yeah, minus you know the baby maker. Yeah. Well, I, was, <laughs> I was holding on to that running. Yeah. You know, Man, so, uh, it's a good uh, thing because you've been throwing that thing priority. at parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. That thing just started urinating on itself. Like, man, I got to save this. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. <laughs> My man was like, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. And took it off, like holding it. Hey, man, but you were also explaining to uh, to, to me that when when you came down the wing, um, there was there was uh, gas on the wing, and that ignited you. But you were saying that, at, you, if I'm not mistaken, was AM the one that kind of covered you up? Yeah, well, what happened was, you know, in, in, you know once, you know, you... Sure, anyone that reads the book will will, will peep the story, but yeah, we, at and the you know, end, what? let's say them something. We pro we want yeah. people to read the book yeah. as well. Yeah. At you the know, end, it's not like he was in your <laughs> kitchen <laughs> talking to Trying you. To all the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't go to everybody's kitchen. So, y'all, <laughs> y'all pick up the book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sitting up here talking and everything. Like, there is a book where you guys yeah, can read so everything. Let's believe that. Living large, cheating death, and drums, drums, drums. Travis, how old were you when you first started playing drums? Four. Four years wow. of age. Yeah. 
And you kind of pass that torch over to Landon also. I'm trying to put my son with Landon. I don't know what's going to happen with him. Yeah. <laughs> but when I see my son, I'll be like, hey, go with Landon. Something, something's about to pop. Go start a band. You know what I'm saying? So at four years of age, your family, they get you a drum set? Yeah, well, you know, like, none of my, I didn't come from, like, you know, for anyone who don't, you know, don't doesn't know me or my history or whatever. It's not like I come from, like, a musical family. Right. Or my pops was, like, some, like, higher up at a record company. It was, like, you know lower middle class and I would just I was three or four and I was beating on pots and pans right you know and my mom you know took notice and was like you should get him a drum kit like he doesn't stop playing like he just wants mm. to you know I'd play on pots and pans for hours and then they got me uh an animal drum kit because the Muppets was right like, right was popping <laughs> off like that, you know so um, I think everybody had that we just didn't become <laughs> yeah, successful exactly we just weren't good you know at what it. I mean pots and pans I beat on at the house <laughs> Oh, yeah, like, my pots and pans. Uh, I would literally like I thought I was animal. Like, oh, that was that's so dope. Cool. I love yeah. that. So he, you know, some people looked up to, you know, I mean, I did look up to Alex Van Halen as I got older, mm. like certain drummers, Buddy Rich, but Animal was my inspiration. That's why you look like this too. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, you know. So yeah, that's kind of what triggered it all. So when you when you go from and you know it's crazy, Travis. Like sometimes the drummer isn't the most popular. There's, there's a few drummers yeah. that become extremely popular. Yeah, but it's always kind of like the lead singer, yeah, so on and so forth. Or, yeah, the guitarist, yeah, yeah. you know. And the drummers sometimes is is in the background. Yeah. Now, how many groups before we get to, to like, like the Blink-182? Like, how many groups do you think or do you know that you've been a part of? I mean, there was a lot. There was, like, the group, you know, I grew up in Fontana. Uh, mm -hmm. This band I played with called Feeble mm -hmm. um, that... That actually took me to like when I was sixteen. I uh, I I basically my my dad gave me an ultimatum, not a mean ultimatum, but politely told me like, you know, either get a job and 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 work sixty hours a week and pay rent, or get out there and play your drums, but mm. don't do it here, not paying rent, not having a real job. So, so you I, left home. I took his advice, yeah, but it was the best thing. Like, but you know, if what? I didn't have a dad like that. I probably would have just coasted, and mm. I would have. And you hear you know. these success stories from successful people. But there's had to be a lot of people that they was like, whoa, go on. And then they just left and like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shit, pops. Yeah. It didn't happen. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. But you and your dad are extremely now, close. Yeah, I'm really close oh. to my pops. But, you know, it was kind of like I wanted to prove to him I could do it, right. too, you know? So, yeah, I mean, that that brought me into just being like I was basically a like a drum escort, like a drum whore. Right, like right. I play with right. anybody. Yeah. You know, like, I'll be there. Yeah, I was, I was just, my goal was to have enough money to have somewhere to sleep, some food to eat, and uh, and just What was the average that you drums. made? Wow. Because I remember, man, when I would DJ, right, it was me and my boy DJ Ray. And by the end of the night, we made twenty dollars, <laughs> and we wow. cut it in wow. half. We both made ten. That's we got the equipment yeah. and rented. We both made ten dollars a piece. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you couldn't tell us nothing because we were on our way to something. Yeah. What yeah. was the average if somebody kind of said, hey, man, can you come and play with us tonight? I mean, in the beginning. If it wasn't free. In the beginning, it was free. Right. It was like I moved to Laguna. I became a trash man in Laguna because my boy. Like uh, on the truck? Yeah. I, I heard I was, that. Yeah, trash man out there. But it was That's in, why your house so spotless. I was, <laughs> I was in Laguna Beach, though, like one of the you know yeah. most Take that trash yeah, to the house. Beautiful yeah. places, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's Best treasure. place in California to be a trash man. But, yeah, um, hell yeah. But not in the beginning, it was free. It was, you know, before you ever make money, or I don't know how the get down now is with like with kids and social media, or whatever, but you go out there and you work for free. Yeah, and, man. You know, that 10,000 hours. You bust, mm -hmm. you hustle, and you and you get noticed, mm -hmm. you know, oh. and, you, and you create, you know, the demand for someone to want to pay you. Right. You know, <laughs> so that's what it was for me. And then, uh, you know, I went from playing in that little band uh, called Feeble, which was with, like, four of my brothers that I loved, to, you know, going on to playing the Aquabats. Yeah, and man. Then, See, that's where I picked yeah, you up at. Making a little bit of money in the Aquabats and then, you know, getting asked to play in a couple other bands and then, you know, finally joining Blink, you know. So it was like, that. you know, there's, there was a lot, you know, a lot that that went into How did you not separate, but, you know, like like, Blink is a hell of a name. You know what I'm saying? How did you not get lost in the Blink-182 sauce? You know what I'm saying? And that's not just rhyming. I'm right. trying to get the album. <laughs> but, you know, you know, because there's some cats that's like, like you look at a band, and people only want to see that band sometimes together. How yeah. did you individually break away and be able to be Travis Barker? 
I mean, I don't, I don't know. I didn't have a plan. It wasn't like planned out. I think in the early years of Blink, you know, like there was like, I just had cool opportunities mm. that kind of, I think, m- helped me, you know, wrap my head around what I, what else I could do. You know, I think like in the first year I was in Blink, Puff hit me and was like, yo, come be in my, my bad boy yeah. video. Yeah, bad boy for life. Like, <laughs> like, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved Black Rob at the time. Yeah. And, uh, oh, like that whole g Depp, like that whole movement was, yes, was, sir. was dope. So, uh, so I was like, yeah, of course. You know, you kidding me? I grew up loving like hip hop and rap music. So I did that. And then from there it was, you know, we were on tour with Black Eyed Peas and, 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 uh, and Will I Am and, and then would ask me like, yo, come on stage and rock with us. So I'd rock with them. And, uh, it was just like one thing after another. And it was like, it was sort of kind of an awakening. Like, well, I, I love this music and, and uh and there is other things I could do. Right. Like drums are in everything, you know, right. it's in every style of music. So I just I just never put, you know, like put myself in a box. I never said like, hey, I can only do this. I was always very open minded and just wanted to do what kind of like what my heart wanted to do. I wasn't really thinking too much. It was like, Yeah, of course I wanna go play with the black eyed peas. Yeah, of course man. I wanna go play with T I on Jalen. Of course I wanna play with Jeezy. You know, it was like I I'd kind of met all these people, especially, you know, there came a point, and I talk about it in my book, like we're in one year. Blink. You mean this book right here? Yeah, that book <laughs> right Never large, cheating death, and drums, Get drums, it. drums. But I was uh, I was on the way to having uh, Alabama. Like, my, my wife at the time was having Alabama. It was my mm-hmm. second child. And um, in one year, like, Blink broke up and transplant. Damn. So it was kind of like... You thought you were gonna have to be a trash man again? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> no. I, it would. No, I was really, you know. Yeah, and, and and you know, after all the success of both bands too, I was like, it was it was definitely a crazy time, and that's when Am and I started doing started doing our thing, and then it was uh, it was just it just it it kind of like you know it was a it challenged myself to be like, you know, what 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 do, who am I outside of Blink and Transplant? Right, and and that really I think helped define me how's the relationship with blink as a whole i mean mark's my brother i still talk to mark right obviously all the time you know we're in the studio working on new music um tom i, I don't really talk to very much but to be honest even within the last decade of the band he, he you know he wouldn't really communicate with mm-hmm. anybody very much. You sent your fans into a crazy frenzy the other day when you said like, "Oh, thanks for the good times, Blink. I'm done. I'm going on tour." What do you like messing with the Blink fans? Kind of. No, nah, that was like I never really joke. seen yeah. that too much. But when I saw, I, I was nah. reading a little bit yeah. of it. You know how it happened was a, uh, I I had just filmed a video for 100 with uh, for my single mm-hmm. with Tyga and Kid Ink and everybody, and it's basically like takes you back to like Rat Pack, like the 60s. So we we were all wearing like fedoras yeah. and suits and stuff, and I'd send it to Yella, you know, because Yella, you know, it, I always tease him. I was like, you know, like I'm, I'm the only one without a cowboy hat or some like cowboy <laughs> cowboy boots in the mix. So I had I had sent him a picture and I said, caption this. I was like, um, I got my hat. I'm a little late, but you know, whatever. I got you, dog. Like whatever. I was just kidding with him. He's like, nah, caption this. And then he sent that, and I was like, oh okay. And then I just, <laughs> I just posted it, you know, like just goofing around, but like. And people really took it to heart. They did. But, but you know, that that is, you know, uh, that's my brother. I love I love playing with him. You know, and I try to play with, I, I still try to perform with him as much as I can, you right. know. Right. Uh, Would it be another Blink album tour, or you think that that we've seen? No, I think we're going out next summer. I okay. think we're working on Do y'all on an go album like right on now. separate buses and I mean, just kind of show up? For me, it's a little different, you know, after, after everything happened. I bought a tour bus. Yeah. So I'm always on a tour bus. Yet yeah, I've, I've thought about flying lately. I right. think about it. Right. Wow. Of course, I have nightmares for the next week after yeah. I think about it. But I, I do you, at man. least. I, you know, it's not like I'm like, you know, I've blocked it completely out of my life. Right. You know, I'm like, I, I'll, I'll definitely consider it. I just, I got to get there. Not but, today. Yeah. But maybe. Yeah. I remember at one point, man, I have a great uh, hypnotherapist mm-hmm. by the name of Tom, Tom Silver. And I remember you and I were talking about it. And I had talked talk with Tom, and I, you know, Tom went in and, and seen, you know, what was going on with Travis, so on and so forth. And then Jenny Rivera passed. Oh man! And I mm. couldn't, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. couldn't have the conversation. You was like, I, it was like I couldn't even have a conversation because she had passed in in a plane crash, and it was right at the time when we were kind of talking about possibly 
doing some hypnotherapy. And then when that happened, and you, I was like, man, nah, like, re- yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. Like, I, I don't know, Plane, planes scare the you know yeah. crap out of. They scare me since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. You know? So when you go on tour, though, you go on, you go on boats. I'm trooper, yeah, man. Yeah. It takes me nine days to get there on the wow. Queen Mary to Europe, and then. And then I drive all across Europe. So sometimes it's like five days to get to the next gig. Have you ever missed the show? Nah. Okay. <laughs> nah, like I, I've showed up. Yeah. I've showed up like five minutes before. Just yeah. In. yeah. Sliding like, in. Get on, stage, <laughs> get on stage, kill it, and then sometimes you know everyone else gets to chill there for two days off, and it right. might be some You're on lavish. the bus. You might be in wherever. You know. The queen like, want to meet us. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I got a trip so time. yeah, and then man, and then at the end sometimes the boat. Don't leave right away, so I have to chill. But I'm in London for two weeks, and I I enjoy London. Now you take so the babies much. as well, huh? Sometimes, yeah. Right, yeah, man. They, they've been over there; they love it. Well, next time I'm gonna go with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. save, we'll, save we'll, you a we'll spot. Guys yeah, my man be out there working out on the boat, <laughs> <laughs> bringing treadmills and all kind of stuff. I'm like, man, like, dude, I'm we going go. on tour to get fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out here to do this. Here. Yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Do, do you ever get on the boat like, damn, like this is taking a long ass time to get there? Oh, you have. I mean, it's nine days. Think yes. about what you do oh. in nine days at home. Yes. So, but the one good thing is, is sometimes at home I'm so busy or I, I can't focus. I'm doing so many different things. Right. On the boat, you're 100% focused. Like I work, I run like hour and a half to two hours a day, you know, getting ready for tour and play the drums for like two hours a day. I would not do that at home. Mm-hmm. You There's never so get on the mic things. and tell your fans like, "Hey, I did a whole lot of fucking shit to get here." <laughs> nah, I mean some of them don't even get it. Like they don't, you know. But that's cool. I'm not looking for no sim. I mean, it's obvious. It's honestly a, um, it's a crutch for me. It's not like, you know, especially for what I do. You know, I should be in. Japan tomorrow and Australia the next day and right. you know whatever and there's all these opportunities and I just for now I've got to let them slide I, right. I gotta, you got to you know and, and then it's like the anyone that tries to to understand like man it's just you know ten hours on a flight compared to such yeah. and such and, and like we don't understand that mm-hmm. like yeah. we don't even have a position to say anything remotely close no. to that especially too like looking at if you look at the history. You know, Adam started flying right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, right away. I was in the burn center still. I wasn't even out of my my last 27 surgeries, and he was flying. Wow. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I mean, mind you, he was never, you know, scared of planes like I was. Right. You know, like, um, and uh, and then when I met with him, he's like, yo, well, I have a, a new therapist, and, you know, she allows me to take Xanax to fly. And this is like, this is my guy who was 12 years so- sober. Oh, you know? yeah. This is the guy who got me sober on many occasions. Like, Trav, get sober for 48 hours and make that decision. Because you're thinking crazy, whatever, you know? So, I, you, you know, you think about that. And then started lightly medicating himself to fly. And then, you know, you know I lost my guy Slippery to a, slow. a yeah. drug overdose, you know? Yes, so it's like. I don't want to rush too much into it because for me it will be that it'll be like oh let me just take this to fly and then it'll you know I I don't I don't I got to do it when I'm when my mind's completely right. I hear you. Know? you. Yeah, and, so. and, and there there definitely can't be a just a date or you know what I'm saying where you just like oh by such and such like you will know. Yeah, you would definitely know, Travis. Travis. Yes. <laughs> So we, what's going on, bro? What's up, bro? We know what's going, what's going on. on. I don't know. Stop you it. tell us, man. That smile is something special. Uh, yeah, uh, Travis, straight yeah. out, man. Are you dating Rita or? <laughs> That's Gorgeous. cold, big. That's cold. <laughs> is it? <laughs> nah, you know, Rita's just a good friend. I heard that. Really good friend. That's good, man. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. yeah. You showed us some mad love on nah, your Instagram. You no, know, no. Nah, yeah. I'm glad you said yeah, that. Man. Because one of my cats is is talking with her. Yeah. And I was really like, man, well, I'm hearing that she's talking with Travis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, no, nah, no. Nah. And, and then when I saw them together, mm-hmm. she, I guess she don't know how close I am to you. You know what I'm saying? But I just yeah. felt a certain way. So I'm glad yeah. that you said it's just your yeah, friend. Because that would have been horrible. Yeah, I can tell by the look on his face, that's not his friend. I just, <laughs> made that, I just made that story up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, uh, it's cool looking around like, like you yeah, saw what? Up. Like, he tried to clinch this like, man just tell me? Oh built God. a fucking rose thing for her <laughs> with his bare hands after a drum session with his fingers split open. Oh my man, God. because, okay, well, oh you know what? I'm going to let it be. 
I'm yeah. gonna let it be. Whatever it is, man. Yeah, man. Nah, it's just the homegirl. Yeah. Um, You're lucky. You know, sometimes you like. <laughs> you have some hot. beautiful homegirls right. yeah. sometimes. Yeah, man. She's dope. She's so she's, sweet. She's dope and and she's talented. Mm-hmm. I honestly. Now, this like, girl, Elizabeth, right here, is she one of your homegirls, too? Yeah, what's up, man? What's up, Elizabeth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of the homies also? No. She's go ahead now. Look, Look at her. Hello. 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 Let me hug you. She was like, man, let me go on and get in this shot. You worked with him, too? Yeah, she was. She was at. You were at the 100 video. Go ahead yeah. now. See? What? And now she's here. Did you plant her here to test me now? No, nah, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I brought her here to test me. <laughs> good, good, good Lord have mercy. But yeah, so I'm glad that it's just, you know, yeah, like, yeah. how you say, man. Nah, just, just friends. friends. And you have some great friends. You yeah, know what I'm awesome saying? Friends. So you guys, oh my gosh. You guys man. Netflix and chill? Don't Henry. answer that. Chloe. Have you seen a new Netflix oh, and chill? It's nah, a condo. Who, who's watched um, Narcos? There you yes. go. Oh. Narcos. So yes. good. Have you watched it, it? Or is yeah. it just background music to you? I mean, a background <laughs> show. It, it has been like me and my wife, it. man. Oh my god, we the fucked with some of the best shows. <laughs> <laughs> what? Real it's been both. I, I had to rewatch the season. Yeah. You know. yeah, you have to like really pay attention to, especially if you don't know Spanish. They have so much Spanish in it. You gotta like, you can't watch the movie and clean at the same time because you gotta pay attention to like yeah. all the subtitles. Yeah, it kind of keeps me more focused that I have to Definitely. read. Definitely. You know? Yeah. But yeah, it's a that's a dope. Have you dope, been to any dope, like like the uh, the scary park, like any like not scary farm or? Anything? I've like, horror nights. Yes, both. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Just checking. I was just yeah. yeah. Took the family. It's funny you asked and... that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Oh my God, my notes say that Rita Ora was there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy as hell, That's man. Cool. Oh my gosh, this guy. That's a friend right there. Yeah, you gotta love, love it. Right. All right. Well, man, let me know if uh. We all need to hang out. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, and then we're all friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can be there. Vettel, Vettel, Vettel can be there. Rita. Yeah. Re- re- uh, it the depends kids. on which friend he want to hang out yeah. with. I'll day. bring Mystery Matt. Stop he, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's Mystery yeah. Matt? Her boyfriend that doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, she has this boyfriend. Yeah, Didn't man. he play with Blink also? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everything that happened, this dude is a part. He's yeah. a lawyer. He was UFC. A basketball player. Does yeah, he's, he's much like Travis. He has knocked, a lot of slashes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He knocked out Chuck Liddell. Like, it's all kind wow. of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but you know what it is, man? She's a beautiful girl. We haven't yeah. quite figured out why she got to lie about a man. Yeah, that's mm. true. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Hey, Trav, and the pictures in this book, man. Yeah, man. It's so there's this one, there's one picture where I know every time you showed this to someone, they're like, yeah, wow, yeah. man. Let me see which one you're That one about. picture in the hospital, yeah. man. So there's like, there's is this, like was a, that a hard picture wow, to look at? My bro, heart so no, nah, I mean, you know, I oh. didn't. It was it was one of those things where I got out of the hospital mm-hmm. and um, Kirk, one of the one of the doctors that were there, I became really good friends with them, and uh, he had sent me all my photos from the hospital, the, the hospital, mm-hmm. and that was like one of like four hundred. And, uh, that look like this one? Yeah, I mean, there's ones of, there's even more gorier ones. Mm-hmm. That was one that the book people, that you, you know, my publisher clear. said mm-hmm. I could clear. Um, but yeah, Trav, man. what am I looking at here? Is know, this right man. after or is this the healing that. process? Yeah, that's right after. Um, I mean, basically, I mean, anyone who's a burn victim, man, go up and, you know, show them some love. Because it's, it's, a, it's a crazy, mm-hmm. it's a crazy procedure is, you know, once you get in the hospital, they, they, uh, they is scrape that what you that with, is with right a metal there? brush. Oh. Yeah, you're putting like a big metal pan for weeks at a time because oh. you're so prone to infection, and they scrub you with a metal brush. I cannot even. So, hey, dude, uh, unless someone know, we have no bro. idea None. None. what yeah. someone goes through. It's insane. I, that's why, still to this day, every year I'm at I'm at the Grossman Burn Center to go visit kids yeah, or, or whoever you know at in holidays and stuff. But it's uh, it's definitely. I mean, I didn't share any pictures of. Of anything, you know, up until this book. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the one that's like kind of like tells you the state I was in, you know? Good. I look, wow. I Is this that night? I look dead. Uh, I don't this know. This isn't the night, huh? No, it's, no, it's, no. it's afterwards. Wow. That looks crazy. Man, God. so, so Trav, when something like this happens, are your, are your clothes? I remember you say your socks was like in your skin. Well, yeah. I mean, and that's why they have to. Go ahead. We kind of touched on it earlier is what I did is, you know, obviously if you're in a, in a, in a situation where you're in survival mode, you know, um, once the plane had crashed, I, I was I was on fire. So I tried to get it everyone I could. You know, I woke up AM. I made an attempt to go get Chris and, and uh, Che again, and then my whole body caught fire. And uh, I then went to the emergency exit, popped it open, and um, I jumped out. And I was the first one out, and I jumped right into the jet. So like in those jets, you know, the, the little round mm-hmm. parts on the wings. That's what holds all your fuel. So I basically jumped into fuel, and I had socks Damn. on. So it was like my body was soaked 
with jet fuel. So, so it just ignited. Yeah, my feet got it really bad, mm. you know. But no, I mean, I was like, two months later, I was still burping up jet fuel. It was terrible. Whoa. Like, yeah. I mean, to this day, when I'm near airports or anything, I smell it. That's the only thing I think of. Like, other people are like, oh, it smells right like jet fuel. Yeah. And I'm like, right. yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, it smells a little different to me. Yeah. But. Man. So, yeah, yeah, that was the hardest thing. And, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have, you know, they probably would have amputated my feet if, uh, if it wasn't for Adam. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Patting you down. Yeah. Man. Wow, yeah. man. Travis, you're covered in tattoos, obviously. And I can't help but to notice La Virgen uh, Guadalupe on you. And you have crosses everywhere and Jesus on you. At any point after the crash, did you realize or even feel or think like I was saved for a higher purpose like you were spared for a higher reason because I'm definitely not in your shoes but I feel that like yeah has that crossed your mind have you gone through that I mean I was brought up Catholic you know and um and I yeah I mean 100% I knew I was you know because for a while I was you know it was like survival's guilt right mm -hmm. mm. I'd be like why why me you mm -hmm. know and then especially after Adam passed it was even Harder. It was even worse, or it was like on some Final Destination type yeah. movie, you know, stuff. I was like just waiting to go. Um, but then, no, I mean, after, you know, thinking about it a lot and talking to people, even people like Jose, mm -hmm. you know, um, you just realize you, you can't question it. You just got to know you're here for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You know? that, it's beautiful. Travis Barker, definitely want to thank yeah. you for coming yeah. in, man. The book is thank available you. for you right now. Living large, cheating death, and drums, drums, drums. Thank you, my brother. Oh, thank always you a pleasure to thank see you. Yeah, thank you for having me. We need me. to go have breakfast, man, because yeah, he's man. one guy. He always pay. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because everywhere I go, I pay. But yeah. when we go to eat, he's he like, oh, I already paid for it, you know, oh, or I wow. do the nice. fake lifting off my hand. Yeah, yeah. You sure? Like, you know, big, already did. Oh, oh man, man. All right. you sure? Yeah, the crossroads. I, I thought, yeah, was, yeah, oh my god, I thought that it was obvious that what I was doing because then I start ordering yeah. stuff that I wouldn't eat on my own yeah. dime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, let me get the frog leg. Uh, Why are you having two lobsters? Omelet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me get one lobster on the table yeah. and one to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Trav, thank you, man. Yeah, and I man. appreciate you. I love you, my brother. I appreciate you guys. Love you too. Best believe that. That's my man Travis yep. Barker right there, big boy. Big boy.